Dan Bongino is the Republican 2012 candidate for U.S. Senate, a former New York cop and Secret Service agent. But does Bongino have what it takes to move into the political arena? Welcome to Headline News. We're not fighting against corporate taxes and income taxes and Obamacare. We're not. You may think you are, but you're not. We're fighting an ideology. Now, the symptoms of that ideology are Obamacare, ever-increasing taxes, because keep in mind, your fair share is everything. They'll never give you a number, because that number's 100%. They'll never give you a number. I want to move on to uh, something, a system that I've been through, yeah. um, which is the immigration system. Sure. Um, it's a painful, mm, <laughs> painful, I agree. painful process. Yeah. As someone who, you know, um, was extremely lucky to be chosen by several employers in the United States who had companies in the, U in the UK and transferred over. The solution, uh, is there a solution? I mean, there is no path for people who come in. There's a lot of criticism. Um, I once heard somebody say, you know, they're, they're taking our jobs. Well, they're doing our jobs. Where, where would you possibly start? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I've been through the system, not myself, but with my wife, who's from Colombia and is uh, naturalized and sat there as, you know, she raised her right hand and pledged allegiance to our flag and, uh, you know, got, uh, it was a very emotional moment. I don't even like to talk about it because I get emotional even thinking about it now. Um, the system is broken. There's no question about it. My wife uh, did not take anybody's job. My wife created uh, a web design business and could actually hire people tomorrow if she wanted to. She didn't hurt anybody's job. Um, there are so, there is a legitimate argument to be made, though absorbing 12 million people from one specific country in low-wage jobs is, is not the best thing for our economy right now mm -hmm. because there's a social cost to that as well. But the system needs to be fixed. I've always suggested that we move towards a points-based model for skill fields. Uh, obviously, we, we, keep, uh, we keep open a, a certain charitable co function to immigrants. I mean, this is a country of immigrants. My great-grandparents were immigrants. And in 2050, the immigration... Uh, the, uh, immigration and our birth rate is actually going to be less than replacement rate, um, 2.1. So who's going to buy your home? Who's going to buy your assets? We ultimately need immigration. The process has to be fixed, but that's a different argument from illegal immigration. I mean, mm. You followed the rules and so did my wife. However bad they may have been, and I agree <laughs> with you, they are terrible. <laughs> But I think a lot of rules and laws are terrible. I'm a citizen of the United States. I have to, you just don't get to agree with the ones or follow the ones you agree with. Right. So illegal immigration is a different component. And, and, and I think immigrants should understand that. Yeah, and they should definitely, not, my, my, I mean, my wife is, is I, I would debate more conservative than me on, on certain immigration issues because she says, hey, I really put my skin in the game. I want to do this the right way. I think you should have to do it too. But you're spot on. The system is broken. My wife went through hell getting her citizenship uh, and back. It was, it was awful, it was mm. a terrible experience. Oh no, it is, it's a very interesting experience. Um, we talk about, uh, you, you talk about your wife's business, your web business, small businesses are key to the survival of any town, any city, any nation. Sure. And particularly in the Hagas town, we have big problems, not only drawing new businesses to the area, but keeping the businesses that are already here, that already exist, keeping them here. How would you change that? What would you do differently? Well, there's a number of things. Our corporate tax rate's the highest in the world. That affects big business and small business, but it hurts small business even worse. Not the highest in the world. Well, well highest it's in, in the, the industrialized world. Yeah, <laughs> we're after Democratic Republic of Congo and I think Ghana, but it's in the industrialized world. Um, yeah, that, that corporate tax rate damages small businesses worse than big corporations. Big corporations can afford a lobbyist, can afford an army of lawyers to go in and lobby for their specific tax deduction, while if you own you know, Dan Bongino's plumbing, uh, you don't get to do that. So you pay a rate that's higher than a company that may provide plumbing. Maybe it's an enormous plumbing company nationwide. I'm, mm. I'm just making it up. But you're not, you're not playing football on a flat field. You know, you're throwing uphill. Everyone else is running downhill. Um, that, that's an enormous issue. Um, but there's other things as well. I mean, Davis Bacon. Davis Bacon sold to people as, well, it's a living wage act. It's not. It's actually a racist piece of legislation that was started as a racist piece of legislation and continues as such. I don't throw that term around. That's not a game. That's a very serious term. But it's accurate. Mm -hmm. It's destroying minority-owned construction businesses. It's giving them, I mean, how many minority construction workers are actually constructing in Baltimore City? Very few because they can't compete because they're, they're subject to this ridiculous act. Empowerment zones are, are another area of concern. Why don't we set up struggling areas of the state, some parts of the city, some parts in Western Maryland, companies that are big companies that are willing to relocate here, 
give them a, a corporate tax waiver for a couple of years. People can say, oh, well, they're not going to pay their taxes. No, they are going to pay their taxes here when they establish themselves. Sounds like a simple solution, right? We sat here change, changing the, the face of the nation. It's pretty easy. We've, we've it? got it all on tape. We can. because we, we're not politicians. That's yeah, well, I certainly am not. Um, uh, it sounds pretty simple. So uh, the Republicans they've had the chance to do it in the past, and one could argue that yeah. they you know, obtained a fairly high amount of debt. Um, do you think that particularly in this district, in the 6th district, that people, people are fearful of that happening again? Because the Democratic voters, you know, they've, they've certainly had, had a, a good run at it. Certainly uh, the likes of uh, Senator Cardin have had a good run of it. Do you think they're fearful of, of maybe yet more debt? Because I know there's huge criticism that, sure. you know, uh, Obama wasn't able to go in and clean it up in, in the short time he's been there. Yeah. Uh, well, debt's a bipartisan issue. It's not a Democrat or Republican issue. Um, it, it is a more salient issue now because President Obama has added more debt than any president in our history. Um, but we've done it too. And that, um, but the, the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. I mean, it's just added a lot of debt. And mm -hmm. this is the kind of debt that we're not going to be able, unfortunately, to dig our way out of in the long run. Are people frustrated with that? Um, of course. And Senator Cardin is not done anything to forward a budget. There's no budget in the Senate. You know, the Republicans have, there's been this narrative going that they've been obstructionists. And I say, really? Well, that's funny because they passed the stimulus, they passed the Affordable Care Act, and they passed Dodd-Frank, three enormous pieces of legislation. We didn't, who obstructed that? I mean, mm -hmm. this, these were three groundbreaking pieces of legislation done exclusively without any reaching across the aisle at all. So how is, <laughs> Have there been some pieces of legislation they've stopped? Of course, they think it's bad legislation, but to call the Republican Congress, you know, obstructionist, I think is just a, a narrative that's completely and totally inaccurate. The president got through everything he wanted to get through in his first two terms, and it just didn't work. It's been great to have you. Very briefly, you are running out of time. What do you do for fun? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'd be lying to you if I said I had a lot of fun these days. Um, I, I, I do like to work out. I don't know how fun it is, but it is certainly a stress relief. Uh, and, but that's really it. I do a lot of reading. I'm not, I've never, being a Secret Service agent, I was never really the fun guy on the <laughs> blog, so I'm sorry to say it, but it's well, true. Well, thanks for joining us. We appreciate Thank having you. you here at HMTV6. Thank no, you so much for your time. Thanks a lot.